Hey there, this is Phil White, the Earth Sciences Librarian at CU Boulder. Just making a follow-up video from a previous video about delineating drainage basins. This one is about uh, going a little more specific into delineating uh, a, a specific watershed. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the watershed that is associated, that uh, flows into this uh, what appears to be a dam or uh, hydroelectric plant or something like that. Okay, so I um, have a couple of DEMs loaded here. And uh, these basically cover the whole catchment area. Uh, what we want to do first is merge these together. So I'm going to go to, to the analysis tab and open up my toolbox. So in our tool set, uh, the tool we want to use here is found under Data Management Tools. And then you want to go down and select Raster. And then it's under Raster Data Set, Mosaic to New Raster. Our input rasters are the two rasters we have here. You want to set your output folder. Uh, I'm working, uh, I'm going to put mine, store mine with some of my other data. Okay, and give it a name, call it merged DMs. Uh, it requires an extension, and these are .tiffs, as we can see over here. So it's going to be .tif. Spatial reference is going to be the same as both of these inputs. They're both in WGS84. Uh, the pixel type, you can right-click on the raster and go to Properties. And then the raster source, raster information, you can see that um, we are working with 16-bit, so if we go back to our tools, we'll go with 16-bit unsigned, and we'll leave the rest defaults and run it. Oh, number of bands is also required. It's a DEM, so it's a 1, uh, and go ahead and run it. Okay, so now we have a merged raster. Uh, the stretch values are the same. Uh, everything looks clean. So at this point, it will be helpful to clip this down. Uh, running some of these geoprocessing tools over this large raster will take time. Um, so it's it's a good idea to kind of clip it down at this point. Here's kind of our area. Um, since it's a dam, we mostly know that it's going to be flowing kind of in this area into the into the catchment. Uh, but we want to make sure we catch it all, so I don't want to clip too much off. Uh, so I'm just going to use the extent of the window to clip it. So the, the kind of easiest way to, to clip this down, in my opinion, is just to go over to your layer uh, right click on it, go to data, export raster, and your output raster, we can we can name it uh, clipped raster, or clipped, we'll call it clipped DEM, and for clipping geometry you can go to current display extent to cut it down and go ahead and export that okay and that's done so now what we have left is just this area uh, which hopefully covers the entirety of our of our drainage basin of our watershed if it doesn't you might have to do it again and to make sure you get the whole area but we're gonna go with this uh, I can remove these at this stage So, okay, we have our layer that we're going to do our work from. Uh, so, first thing we want to do 
is go back to our uh, geoprocessing tools close these out we're done with this set of tools for now uh, we're going to use the spatial analyst tools so drop that down um, and specifically we're going into the hydrology tool set and the first thing we want to run is the fill tool which basically just smooths it out to make sure uh, there aren't any uh, sink points or errors in the DEM and we're going to use our clip DEM uh, we can name our output DEM something like uh, uh, DEM filled run it this one takes a minute to run okay that's done and uh, for me it took 30 seconds so uh, the next tool we're going to run is um, the flow direction tool and the input is going to be our fill DEM and we'll call the output flow direction and run it. Okay, and what we have here is a DEM. Actually, just a, it's more of a model um, that essentially looks at each pixel and assigns a, a value to it um, based on the uh, direction of the cell that is adjacent to it that is at the steepest drop. So next, um, another one we want to run is the flow accumulation tool. It's also right here in the hydrology tools. The input is going to be the flow direction raster that we just created. Output, you can call it uh, flow accumulation. And run it. This one also can take a little bit of time to run. Okay, the flow accumulation tool is finally completed. Um, it took five minutes on my computer. So this is all done, and what we have here is basically a binary image that um, outlines, based on the DEM, what the hydrology network should look like. You zoom in, you can kind of see it. There's some stream here. Um, this little step is important. So we want to find our site again, which is right here. I'm going to zoom in on it. And I am going to turn my flow accumulation layer back on and go up to appearance and we're going to make it kind of transparent here so we can see through it. So what we need to do now is select a pore point. A uh, pore point is basically um, the, out, the output of the entire drainage basin, of the entire watershed, uh, which in this case, uh, this dam will be you know, along this streamline, as close to the dam as we can get it. Um, so what we need to do is create a new polygon, uh, sorry, not a polygon, a new vector point um, layer. So I'm going to go over to my catalog. And under folders, uh, our project folder, watershed delineation is what I named my project. There is a default geodatabase here. And if I drop this down, uh, I can right click and uh, go up to new and create a new uh, feature class. Feature class name we'll just call it pour point. Geometry tra type is going to be point. The uh, coordinate system we want to use, I uh, prefer to use the same thing as all of my other stuff which is WGS84. Uh, everything else is fine, click run. 
Okay. So now we have over here in our table of contents a poor point. Uh, if I were to look at the attributes of this, we'd see that it's empty. There is nothing yet. So what we need to do is create that poor point. Uh, and essentially, we're going to place it as precisely as we can onto one of the cells that represents the Streamflow network. So um, we're going to go with poor point select to go up to edit and click the create button and select poor point and then we're just going to drop it in right here on this cell that represents the stream network. If we if we miss the cell and put it over here uh, we can kind of mess up the the uh, the model that we're creating. So we want it on this and when that is done uh, we've got it on there. We can click save save all edits. Yes. Okay. I'm going to clear my selection. Okay, now we have our pour point, the outlet point for the entire um, watershed. At this point, we don't need flow accumulation anymore. Um, we've got our flow direction. Zoom out. Okay. So now is the final step. Uh, so back to geoprocessing. This time under hydrology we're going to run the watershed tool. Input is going to be the D8 flow direction raster which is the flow direction raster we created earlier. We named it flow direction. Input raster or feature pour point data. So you could input a raster or you can input the point feature we just created. We're going to do that. Uh, we can leave the pour point field IDs, just object ID, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to just name our output um, watershed and click run. Okay. So now we have our watershed delineated. Great. What we can do now is convert this to a vector. If we go to geoprocessing, we're done with our hydrology tools, we're done with everything in the spatial analyst. We can go up to conversion tools and under from raster, we can choose raster to polygon. And our input raster will be watershed. And we can make our output raster, um, we'll call it uh, watershed boundary. Click run. Okay. I'm going to turn some of these other layers off now that we don't need. And. We can change our symbology here by clicking on the symbol in the table of contents and uh, under properties give it uh, an outline color of, I don't know, red and a uh, clear fill, apply, and uh, maybe we'll make this a little bigger. Great. And we've delineated our watershed and created a vector polygon out of it. Uh, so that's essentially how it works. Um, and as I was doing this, I followed uh, these directions, which I'll link in the uh, in the description of this video. Uh, these are just Esri's kind of detailed directions on how to create a watershed model using the hydrology tool set. Uh, we added on the front end there how to merge two DEMs in ArcGIS Pro. And that's a wrap on this video. So definitely uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can, you can hit me up at philip.white at colorado.edu. Bye for now.